All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, tonight we actually have a Bay Area hip-hop legend right here live on the line, man. We got the one and only Contact. How are you doing this evening? I'm good, man. Appreciate you having me on here. Hey, man, I appreciate you in advance for just giving us a little bit of your time, man. You know, I, we most, def most definitely been vibing to your music down here in Canada, man, and we've been a fan for a long time, man. So just thank you in advance for a little bit of your time this evening. Yes, sir, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. But I want to take you back to the very beginning, man, and I, I got to ask you, man, like, what actually made you decide to get into the music industry initially, man? Because you're so talented and gifted at what you at what you do. Um, my cousin Charlie J. Um, back in ninety two, ninety three, um, he had a group called the G Cool Players. Um, I used to dance in his group, and I just caught that uh, caught the bug, and then um. My folks from Richmond, California, the Bro Hides, they gave me the name Contact, and um, they used to rap in a, they had a closet set up with a karaoke machine, so they used to uh, freestyle, so they got me into it, and then uh, I hooked up with my cousin Charlie J in 95, and the first two songs I ever recorded in 1996 were in a film on Showtime uh, called Circle of Pain. And I got to say as well, man, that, that's actually phenomenal that your first songs actually landed in a Showtime, uh, just a Showtime, like, television show, man. That, that, that must have been such a huge feeling for you, man. <clears throat> oh, yeah, it was it was great, man. Just, uh, I remember I was at my friend's house and we were watching the premiere and just to, to hear your song in there, mm -hmm. it's pretty dope. And also the following year, man, in 1997, you actually teamed up with Mr. Mix of the Two Live Crew to actually create the tape titled Ghetto Booty. I was wondering, what's the story behind that iconic record, man? And of course, how did yourself and Mr. Mix get connected? Because, he, like, like honestly, man, just being able to work with Two Live Crew must have been such a surreal moment for you so early on in your legendary career. Oh, man, it was great. Um, I'm a Two Live Crew fan, Miami Bass fan. So um, how we hooked up, actually, um, he produced for a guy named Johnny Z. And I had looked at the back of the tape, and it had his uh, his number. So I just called him up, and I said, hey, man, I'm from the Bay Area. Um, I have this concept of this song called Ghetto Booty. Man, I want to get you on it. And he said, it's all good. So he came down uh, to the studio in the Bay Area and laid his vocals, and, and the rest was history, man. Um, that turned out great. Every time... Two Live Crew would come down to do shows. They got me and they took me with them. We performed at the uh, Wild 94.9 Bomb concert in front of 10,000 people. So every time they came, they would come get me, and I did tons of shows with them. So I learned a lot from um, Mr. Mix and Two Live Crew. And I got to say, man, one of the best DJs to ever touch a turntable, man. Definitely, definitely amazing at what he does. Phenomenal. And he's underrated as a producer. I mean, just go back and look at everything that the man's produced, from the Poison Clan to Two Live Crew to Luke. The guy is, is great behind those boards. And also as well, man, another amazing hip-hop artist you actually had the opportunity to work with, man, is an individual by the name of d Lou that's uh, on his album, It's All In Me, on the, on the song, sorry, Living In The Bay. I was wondering, how did yourself and d Lou get connected, man? And of course, what was it like just working with him? Oh, yeah, d Lou is from San Francisco. Um, my cousin Charlie J put his album out, and my homeboy Sugar Kane hooked us all up, and um, I did the single Living In The Bay, you know, and uh, it got played on the radio, and it was... Nice little underground hit. Um, I enjoyed uh, doing shows with Dilu and stuff like that. And also as well, man, jumping ahead into the into the millennium, in 2003, you actually released uh, a collaboration record alongside a race E um, titled They Got Some Shit On Here. I was wondering, man, what was it like creating that masterpiece and, of course, being in the studio with the one and only a race E? Oh, uh, you're AC, man. We went to high school together. He was uh, one of he was the first Bay Area artist that was featured on the unsigned hype and the source. Um, he was on the West Coast Bad Boys um, tape. He's like a he's a he's a, a Richmond legend, and um, we just man, we hooked up. We knocked out the album in about a month and a half. Um, my cousin Charlie J produced ninety five percent of it. We had features from Black Sea, uh, Pooh Man, MC Light, Prodigy of um, My Deep. Uh, Mr. Fab, so it was, it was a good album, we, and we got it featured on the uh, source in the uh, Independence Day section. 
And I still remember as well when E actually released that album. I think it was like early 2000s, but it was titled Longativity, man. I used to have that on CD back in the day, man. Just an absolute masterpiece of an album. Yeah, E-Race, he's definitely, he's a legend. He's still doing it. Um, matter of fact, he has a single that's getting played on your station with uh, Devin the Dude. You know, so uh, he's, he's doing his thing. And I got to say, man, we most definitely have all those songs locked and loaded for immediately following this interview, man. You know what I mean? Of course, you already know we got to play some Ray C and Contact after this interview, man. You already know. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. And also, you actually have a song out actually titled Stay in School that actually features fellow Bay Area hip-hop legends, man. E-40, San Quinn, and Keek the Sneak. I was wondering, what's the story behind that phenomenal song? And of course, what was it like collaborating with those three legends for, from your side of California? Oh, uh, yeah, that is crazy that you're saying that. That whole thing came from a student. Uh, people might not know I'm a teacher. This will be my um, 22nd year teaching in East Palo Alto at the East Palo Alto Charter School. So I had a student who bought the e and Contact album, and he came to school with it, and he was just like, man, Mr. Steve, I heard your song, I heard your album, I love it. And it made me feel bad, you know, because it's like I'm supposed to be a role model. And from that point forward, I stopped all the cussing and raps and stuff like that, and I just thought about I need to do something to motivate the kids. So the first thing I thought about was having them stay in school because the dropout rate was horrible. And and I called the 40, uh, the Jacka, um, we got um, R.I.P. the Jacka, we got Keep the Sneak, we had um, Selsky, Mac and AK, um, and everybody did it. And we did a video for it, and the video aired on um, MTV Jams, and it was it was a phenomenal project. Um, you know, I think I had a lot of negative because of the fact that it was so positive. You know what I mean? It was a positive song, but um, the radio stations played it a lot, so I I love that project, and that kind of changed my life. And I got to say as well, man, you know what I mean? I don't know how anybody can hate on a song like that because at the end of the day, even if you didn't have those the, like those three fellow Bay Area legends, man, you still support. So it's such a, such a positive topic, man, because, you know what, staying in school is, is good, man, and it's teaching these kids something, man. So even if you didn't have those individuals in the song, man, I still think that that's a positive message no matter who's doing the song. Yeah, yeah, I mean, kids definitely look up to all these artists, you know, and um, they listen to everything that they say, and sometimes if you say something positive, you can change a kid's life, so, you know, for sure. And the one thing I have to ask, man, because like, I don't want to get too, too far into your teaching, but the one thing I, I do want to ask is what actually made you decide to uh, get into teaching, man, because obviously like, obviously, not not a lot of hip-hop artists actually, like, you know, go into that uh, realm of ed that realm of education. Um, I kind of fell into it. Um, I was volunteering at my kid's school, and I would pick them up every day. I was working construction, and I'd pick them up every day at lunch because um, my daughter got out at 12 o'clock, and I would take her take her to her grandmother's. So I would do volunteer um, hours, and I'd play basketball and football with the kids. And the assistant principal at the time said, you know what, I think you'd be good at teaching PE. And I was like, I don't know about that. And I just, you know, gave it a shot. And, man, 22 years later, I haven't looked back, man. It's just, man, teaching is the greatest job ever. I mean, I, I like not a lot of people love their job. I, like, genuinely love my job. And the fact that I, I do music is really cool because, you know, I can combine uh, music and um, teaching them. Like, when we shot the video, we had Keep the Sneak, E-40. All these people were at my school for the video shoot. And, I mean, kids were just, like, in awe, you know, just seeing some of their favorite um, artists at the school. And they can shake hands with them and take pictures with them and stuff like that. And I have to ask as well, man, like, uh, have you ever no, no have you ever heard cuz obviously you know kids at school you know they're but they're blasting their bluetooth speakers and whatnot going through the hall have you ever heard your actual music being blasted through some kids speakers yeah a lot of the parents have played a lot of my songs when they're picking their kids up and it's kind of cool um um listening to it um i did a song called uh 49ers play 60 it was um for the San Francisco 49ers um for the NFL play 60 program and um that song got played at Candlestick Park in front of 50, 60,000 people. And, you know, that was that was cool to hear your song, you know, in a stadium. 
And also as well, man, aside from actually being a hip hop artist, man, you were actually a producer as well. And you were also the executive producer of the season five soundtrack for the television show, Last Chance You. I was wondering, how did that opportunity arise for you? And of course, what was it like working on such a big name television show soundtrack? Um, that kind of fell in my lap too. My son played football for Laney um, during that season. And I was talking to one of the producers um, and I asked her, you guys got music for this? And she said, uh, not yet. So I gave her a few of my uh, positive CDs, and she liked a lot of the songs. And she was like, do you think you can do something like, not negative, but just, you know, kind of hip? And I'm like, yeah. So literally a month and a half, I put the album together and gave it to them. And, and you know, they, they it's, it's available online everywhere. And I gotta say as well, man, in my personal opinion, Last Chance U is such, such a phenomenal television show, man. And if people haven't watched it, I encourage you all to check it out, man. If you're a football fan, this is definitely the show for you. Yeah, it's a great show. They, they win an Emmy almost every year for it, so it's definitely a great program. And also as well, man, aside from the music industry, you are also an author. I have to ask you, man, what actually made you decide to venture into becoming an author and actually writing books? Um, we're doing a documentary um, following my cousin, uh, Kenneth Walker. Um, the first book we did was Never Give Up. Um, Kenneth Walker played football for UCLA and then the Jaguars and then the uh, Calgary Stampede of the uh, Canadian Football League. So he would get, you know, he would get cut. He would always be like the last person cut, the last person cut. But he continued to keep trying, and um, he eventually placed with the Winnipeg, I think the Winnipeg Jet, the Blue Bombers, and they won the uh, Grey Cup two years ago. So. He has a ring for that, and it was just his story of, of not giving up um, that motivated me to make a book because him not giving up, there's a lot of kids that give up um, from the littlest things, and if they can hear his story, it maybe it'll change them. So that was a cool book to do. And also, man, another phenomenal book that, that you actually did, and I actually had the opportunity to sit down and read this amazing book. It was actually Adventures with Mr. Steve and the Big Shift, man. And I have to ask you, because uh, what made you decide to decide, decide to write such a conscious book? Because it was about the George Floyd uprising, but it just it was so inspiring, man, just showing individuals that racism is, isn't the right thing to do. Right. It's, that's the uh, third book of a... A series. So I did. I did two other books, Mr. Steve and the Grasshopper, and then before that, I did the uh, Mr. Steve and COVID nineteen. Um, that talked about everything that happened from the day our school shut down to when we had to do stuff online. And like for me as a teacher, I had to get creative on Zoom. Um, I was able to get um, artists like Ice Cube and Jermaine Dupri um, to say messages for our kids and stuff like that to keep them motivated during Zoom. So obviously during that time, the George Floyd situation happened, and um, a lot of kids with during our Zoom classes would talk about it, and some of them were crying and you know upset and scared of the police. So I, my uncle, um, you know, he did he did probably most of all the writing, and um, you know he would just hey, what do you think about this or what happens to you in this situation? So I'll give him a lot of a lot of information um, that goes down. So we put it out and. Um, far it's, it's like it's flying man we're close to 700 books sold in like less than two months it's like it's definitely doing really good and we're working on the uh the next book after that and that's going to be more so for the latino community that have to do, deal with the uh, daca situation and stuff like that and um the cool thing about the george floyd book is it's also going to be a mini series that's going to be televised nationwide and I have to ask as well, because I know individuals are probably sitting back wondering this. Where can we actually snag ourselves a copy of your amazing books? Oh, yeah, um, Amazon. It's available on Amazon. Um, if you can't find it on Amazon, you can uh, hit me up on all my social media um, platforms. But it's definitely all the books are on Amazon and under uh, Adventures of Mr. Steve. And also as well, man, one of your most recent releases is actually Kids Dance Party. And I, I was wondering, man, if you can give our listeners a little bit more insight on this phenomenal song. And of course, where can we actually purchase this amazing song today? Yeah, Kids Dance Party. Um, You know, you hear that the whole thing about how COVID, um, you know, everybody was at home. And what COVID did for me was it, it opened my mind up and I was just cranking out stuff. You know, I, um, I put out the Kids Dance Party um, but before that, I had the girl dad and to keep on um, with uh, uh, Mr. Fab, uh, Do or Die, and San Quinn. My boy McLaren did both of those tracks. And um, 
the idea be, behind Kids Dance Party is we want. I want to do a celebration to all the kids that worked hard during um, quarantine and during um, school shutdown. So um, it's just like a party song for kids. And um, the cool thing about that song too is um, it's going to be played in five NFL stadiums this uh, season. So it, the song is like taking off, and you can get it on all streaming platforms. Um, it features uh, Mr. Fab, Yuck Mouth, uh, Eracy, Miller, and uh, Dab Daniel, and it was uh, produced by Malik B. And I got to ask as well, man, how did you actually get connected with Yuck Mouth, man? Because that must have been another cool opportunity to be able to work alongside one of the loonies. Yeah, Yuck Mouth, I've known him for years, and um, I got hooked up with him through his wife. His wife, um, I think she still manages him. So I got hooked up through his wife, and Yuck Mouth's done, we've done about four songs together. Um, real cool guy, man. Um, down to earth, will do anything for the kids. Same thing with Mr. Fab, man. Like, I've known Mr. Fab for about 20 years, and um, anytime I need him or Yuck Mouth, hey, I'm doing a song for the kids, man, they do it with no, hesita no hesitation at all. So I appreciate that. There's a lot of good artists like that, you know, EYC, um, a lot of them that just, Anything for the kids, they'll do. And also as well, man, I have to ask, well, what is next for the one and only Contact, man? Because I know your career is so ex extensive within the music industry, man. So I know we only touch base on just a sliver of everything this evening. But is there anything I happen to miss? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote? What was W here oh. live on the Canadian Airwaves? Oh, for sure. There's the movie Finders Keepers. Uh, I wrote this um, film. It's a comedy um, through... The uh, Dark Network and 20G's Vision and Beats by the Bay. Um, it, it it should be released, I say, in December, and it, it, it features uh, Money Ma, Mr. Fab, Mac Magic Mike, Lucy Dream, Pizzo, Thug Misses, and uh, David Collectly and the star comedian Bud. You gotta watch comedian Bud. He is gonna be the next great um, comedian out the Bay Area, man. This guy is. He reminds me of a Mike Epps. He's funny. So it's it's a comedy. Something different that you see, um, especially when you see Bay Area films, um, it's funny, man. I'm, we're about 90% done with it, so we'll probably be finished within three weeks and have a trailer up in about two weeks. So um, I'm excited about it. We've been talking to a few um, companies to uh, put it out through streaming, uh, such as uh, Amazon uh, Music and, I mean, Amazon uh, Films and uh, Netflix. So we'll see which direction it goes out. But um, there's also a soundtrack, and the soundtrack's produced by... Got Daniel and Sugar Cane, and it features Al Capone, Atoli and Thane, uh, Pizzo, Mac Magic Mike, Doug Misters, um, Money Mont, a slew of artists. So I'm excited about this because it's a, it's a funny story, and then the cool thing about it is it's going to lead to my next film, which is a horror, and that's called, uh, so it's the, the comedian, I mean, sorry, this film is Finders Keepers, and the uh, horror film is called Losers Weepers. So we start shooting that at the end of October. And I gotta say as well, man, it definitely sounds like 2021 is the year of contact, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to that movie, man. It, it sounds like it's gonna be a phenomenal, phenomenal flick. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be great, man. Um, I, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. I mean, like I said, uh, working with the Dark Network, Dark Network and uh, 20 Gs, man, it's like a three-headed monster. We're just knocking this out, and it's gonna be good. But also, man, this is the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give, like, shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. But most of all, man, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything Contact if they're not already doing so. Right. Uh, contact 21, K-O-N-T-A-C 21. And that's on all social um, platforms. Um, shout out to man, Magic Mike, you know, Bayer and Legend. I know you had him on your uh, show before. He came through and, and got down on the film. Um, my school, the East Palo Alto Charter School, um, year 22, you know, um, phenomenal school, um, doing a lot of good things. I do an annual toy drive. Uh, last year I did it with Terrell Owens. I'm going to do it again this year with Terrell Owens. So one thing about me is I always give back. You know, I do uh, back-to-school drives, um, tons of things just to give back. Um the Stay in School CD, matter of fact, it raised ten thousand dollars for Bay Area schools. So that's another um, thing, and I'm one to always give back, man. I do a lot for the the communities in the Bay Area. Um, it's important. Um, and again, you know, shout out to man, everybody that's been involved in my career, from my cousin Charlie J, Sugar Kane, my uncle Bob Martis, my cousin Kenneth Walker, just 
man, everybody that, that got down with me over the years. I appreciate it. But I got to say, first and foremost, Contact, thank you so much, man, for just giving us a little bit of your time this evening and coming on 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM, man. Definitely was an honor and most definitely a privilege to have you on my radio station this evening. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, man, you are most certainly welcome anytime, man. Anytime you, you want an interview, man, hit me up. We definitely can make it happen. All right, no problem. God bless. God bless, brother. Have yourself a wonderful night.